Welcome back to Fundamentals of Chest Radiography. Today we are going to talk about pneumothoraces and learn what to look for on these images. You all know by now that there are two layers of pleura, one visceral, one parietal, and in between the two there is just a tiny amount of fluid which allows uh, the two layers of the pleura to slide on top of each other. There is negative pressure within the pleural space and that allows the lung to expand completely. If, for example, there's a trauma to the chest and air enters into the pleural cavity, the pressure, the negative pressure will rise and that will cause collapse of the lung. And this is the case of a pneumothorax. On the chest x-ray, when, when we look for signs of pneumothorax, we in particular look for the bright white line. We look for a bright white line beyond which there are no lung markings and a white line which resembles or mimics the shape of the lung and thus it is convex outward. Sometimes the white line is not really visible, not conspicuous. So instead of just relying on the inspiratory image, we get an image in expiration and with that, we will make the white line more conspicuous. You can see on this image that uh, the white line of the pneumothorax is not that obvious. However, if the same patient is, ex is imaged during expiration, the lung will further collapse and the void left behind the collapsed lung is even more conspicuous in the apical area and along the chest wall. In other cases, the air cannot rise where it usually should. So normally, if the air read the textbook, it knows that it should, it should uh, rise up towards the apical areas. And that is where we usually look for the white line of the pneumothorax. However, in uh, patients who had multiple pneumonias, especially the elderly, they have scar tissue in that lung, which doesn't allow the two layers of the pleura to separate, so the air cannot rise over here. Here's a case of a patient who has had a TB, which is uh, obvious from these calcified nodules and fibrotic tissue over in the upper third of his left lung. And, uh, you can see that the white line of the pneumothorax, beyond which there are no lung markings, is not visible above about this level. And that's due to the fact that there are scar tissue in here, which doesn't allow the pleura to separate. If you're not sure, you can always get an expiratory image or a CT. Now, every time there's a pneumothorax, there is always a tiny amount of hydrothorax because there is some bleeding into the pleural cavity. If um, there is um, more than the usual amount of uh, a couple drops of blood in the pleural cavity, you will see that the air and the blood separate from each other nicely by this horizontal layer. And in this case, the collapsed lung is visible over here, overlapping the right uh, uh, hilar and mediastinal structures. So this is what we called, call a hydropneumothorax. I might have mentioned to you that as radiologists, we do not really like the supine images because some disease like pneumonias, pneumothoraces, or a tiny bit of pleural effusion might go undetected on the supine image. However, if the patient has pneumothorax, a specific sign, the so-called deep sulcus sign, might be visible. This phenomenon can be explained by the fact that in the supine patient, the highest point of the chest cavity is now no longer the apical area, but instead it's the anterior basal area. So you can imagine that the added transparency caused by the pneumothorax causes 
the structures over here to become more visible and the edit transparency will cause deepening uh, of, the, of the lateral sulcus. So this patient in this particular case has a pneumothorax on the left hand side which causes the deep sulcus sign on the supine chest x-ray and you can always compare the two sides you can see that this is how the sulcus should look like also on the left hand side but due to pneumothorax it's uh, apparently deeper and you can see the sign sorry you can see the cause of the pneumothorax on this chest x-ray as well you can see that there's a rib fracture over here and um, some of you might also wonder what these lines are now I will get a little bit about a little bit ahead of myself because I usually talk about medical devices that are apparent on the chest x-ray in later talks but I will tell you here that this is a central venous catheter this is a trach trachea tube over here and this patient also has a feeding tube which uh, extends far beyond the stomach pitfalls sometimes we will see white lines on the chest x-rays which are not due to a pneumothorax so here's the patient and for now let's focus on this line which uh, project over the left lung so this is also a white line however this line doesn't mimic the normal contour of the lung and beyond this line we see normal lung markings so this cannot be the white line of a pneumothorax and as you might have guessed this is the medial border of the scapula which you can see over here and uh, this patient also has another white line over the right lung this white line kind of mimics the right lung the contour of the right lung however beyond it there are also lung markings so this cannot be the sign of a pneumothorax and uh, these lines we see quite frequently when elderly people are imaged or very young children are imaged especially if they are supine or semi semi erect as uh, this image was taken in and so this this uh, white line is due to just a skin fold emphysema might also be problematic because uh, especially if patients have large bullae then we will see a white line and beyond that white line we won't see normal lung markings however these white lines are not convex towards the lateral side of the chest they are more convex towards the middle of the patient and so this again is not a cause of a pneumothorax this was caused by a large pulla which you can see over here and after seeing the, the chest CT image you might have picked up that there are numerous other pulle within this lung now the air within the pleural space theoretically can dissect into the mediastinum from where it can get into the peritoneal cavity and even the retroperitoneum or it can rise up into the neck area and here's a case to illustrate that so this patient also suffered a pneumothorax however there's no visible white line on either side what I do see and what I highlighted to you with these green arrows is that there are these linear transparencies over the mediastinum on the left which are telling me that this patient has air within the mediastinum so this is a this is this is a complication of a pneumothorax and uh, this patient probably needs needs a CT to confirm the presence of the pneumothorax and of course to see how large it is here's a case of uh, one of my colleagues who during one allergy season had to sneeze and cough a lot and then ended up uh, with sudden severe chest pain so we obtained a chest x-ray of her and uh, you can see that image over here 
Now, there are no obvious abnormalities on this uh, chest x-ray. However, you can see that there are lines of uh, transparencies in the supraclavicular area and uh, in the neck area as well and uh, over here too and so we we obtained a cervical x-ray of her and that confirmed our initial diagnosis which was subcutaneous emphysema another word for subcutaneous emphysema is surgical emphysema so she did have a pneumothorax which wasn't visible on the chest x-ray however the complication of the pneumothorax the subcutaneous emphysema was visible on both the chest x-ray and then the cervical x-ray so that's why when i talked about reading the chest x-ray i i emphasized to you that you need to look at the bony structures and you shouldn't forget about the soft tissues as well because uh, sometimes you won't see the true abnor abnormality you will only see the complication of it and last but not least here's a 67 year old male whom i saw when i was a junior doctor during one of my night shifts so this man came in with chest pain and told us that he suffered trauma to his chest seven days prior and uh, the chest x-ray showed that he had complete collapse of the right lung some blood in the pleural cavity and you can see the collapsed lung over here and uh, it's no surprise that he suffered multiple rib fractures off of which one is visible over here but the reason i'm showing you this case is because later that night he got a chest tube inserted into his chest into his pleural cavity and the uh, tip of that you can see over here and instead of seeing a nicely expanded transparent lung we saw heterogeneous diffuse opacity over the right lung and that was in keeping with re-expansion pulmonary edema now you need to know about this type of disease because it is life-threatening and uh, you need to think about this complication when you have a patient who, who suffered an old trauma like this patient who had probably suffered the pneumothorax seven days prior or in cases when the air is drained out too quickly from the pleural cavity re-expansion pulmonary edema can occur this is an inflammatory response from the lung so what happens is that the alveolar space which is normally taken up by air is uh, um, or it gets gets full of fluid and that hinders with the gas exchange so that's why it's potentially a life-threatening condition and if you see this especially if you have the prior image on the left and you see the the image on the right then you need to call the ICU doctor and tell him or tell her that this patient is in danger. I hope you learned a lot today. I will see you next week when we are going to talk about fluid in the chest cavity in general and uh, alveolar edema, pleural effusion, etc. So stay tuned.